Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Carl. welcome to the Discord.py FAQ video. This video is just aimed at answering the most frequently asked questions that I got during the Discord.py series, both in the comments and in the Discord server. If I missed one, then I'm sorry, I just took the ones that I had seen the most, but there are probably far others and there are probably other questions that you have. This video is just going to cover more the basic answers and stuff it's not going to go super technical so if you're confused by any of the answers in this video you can leave a comment down below or ideally join the discord server in the description or it can help you out better so with that out of the way let's get into the questions how do i run the bot well in sublime it's control b and in every other id it's generally f5 you can run it in, the, in a cmd or a powershell though just by doing python and then whatever the launcher file is dot pi and that should work when i run the bot it says it's finished a second later what did i do wrong if you get in this message it probably means you indented something wrong python is particularly finicky about indents so what you probably did was put all all of the functions in the main bot method inside the init function so just make sure that all the async defs are aligned with each other I can't import or install AP scheduler what do I do we've had this problem a few times where AP scheduler just doesn't want to install for some reason if that's the case then check to make sure you're not using a virtual environment or if you should be using a virtual environment then install AP scheduler into that virtual environment if that doesn't work and you don't know what's going on then try a different pip install method so you can do pi m if that doesn't work then uh, reinstalling python has actually been proven to so you may need to reinstall your python version you might as well upgrade away at it as well i get a syntax error around the walrus operator how do i fix this the walrus operator is only available in python 3.8 and up so if you're getting a syntax error it says it doesn't recognize it then you're using an earlier version of python and you need to upgrade in order to use that it's not essential that you use it but i just really like the operator and i kind of think that you should use at least the most recent minor version of python so that'd be 3.8 it doesn't uh, matter so much about the patch versions but yeah i'd recommend at least using python 3.8 when i do from dot dot db import db i get an error how can I fix this? This is a particularly common problem that people have had. It also can manifest itself in an error that says cannot import beyond the top level package or no module named lib or cannot import bot from lib or something. There's quite a few different methods that Python can tell you that something is going wrong. And in all complete honesty, we don't have a consistent solution yet because it doesn't seem to be a consistent problem. The first thing you should always do is check your directory structure to make sure that it matches mine. I'm using a a very particular directory structure and these relative imports need it to look like that to so just make sure that it's the same as what I've done in the video. If that doesn't work then you can always try running it in a terminal like a CMD or a PowerShell or something. This has actually been proven to fix the problem once or twice so as weird as it may sound it is actually worth trying. Another option is that it could potentially be pylint. Pylint does have a few weird quirks. If you're using VS Code it's actually the default linter for Python. I would recommend installing MyPy instead and seeing if the problem still occurs. If you're using PyLint, sometimes relative imports and even relative directories don't quite register properly. So just check to make sure you're using PyLint. Install MyPy and see if you're having the same issues. And if you are, then unfortunately that's where my list of help comes to an end. I don't actually have a consistent solution to this as I said, we haven't really worked out what is causing this to be completely honest with you. Can you do this system without cogs? Yes. Can you make a video showing it? No. Why don't you use discord.ext.tasks? I actually prefer AP Scheduler to be honest because it gives you some extra control. <laughs> AP Scheduler is capable of doing more, having the cron trigger is actually really nice so you know exactly when things are happening and I don't think that Tasks has that capability. I might be wrong about that but I do know that AP Scheduler scheduler is capable of doing a lot more and there are some things that you would need AP scheduler for anyway so I just prefer to use it everywhere. I get an error saying unable to open database file. What have I done wrong? If you get in this error it doesn't mean that the database already needs to exist. I've had a few people hypothesize that in the past. It actually means that the directory that the database should go in does not exist. The directory needs to exist first before it can be created or accessed. You can of course do this programmatically but you do need to use os.isfile and 
I think os.makedeers or something is the one that creates the directories. But the actual directory that the database is stored in needs to exist before SQLite can create it. What is this ready class for? This ready class is kind of a is a non-standard thing and now that I've completed the series I'm kind of debating whether or not I've actually should have included it or not. It's essentially a system to allow the bot to ready in its own time and prevent the use of commands until that ready sequence has been completed. It's essentially just a method of, of making sure the database doesn't have any weird data or any conflicting data inserted into it, but it's not really necessary for simple bots. It's only really used in more complicated situations where one particular cog takes forever to load for whatever reason so yeah it's not strictly necessary uh, i include it anyway because it's a nice thing to have on a on a scalable project but you don't really need to include it i'm getting indentation errors what did i do wrong check your indentation python is particularly finicky about indentation people that come from other languages find this all the time where Python is extremely finicky about it because indentation is how Python determines what is in an if statement, in a function, in a, in a for loop, in anything. It determines all the different levels through indentation. It has to be consistent. The recommended spacing is four spaces or a single tab, but it doesn't matter so much so long as it's the same across the board. You also can't use a mix of spaces and tabs it has to be all one thing a lot of ids have an option to convert indentation into spaces or convert indentation to tabs it's normally in the bottom right or the bottom left corners where it's, it's talking about your tab spacing idle from what i can tell actually does this automatically for you which is kind of nice um, i'm not really sure why other ids don't bother doing this because I feel as though that would be useful for any language, just to make sure you keep things consistent. But yeah, if you get an indentation error, then simply check your indentations. How do I use Heroku for hosting my bot? Don't. Well, how do I host the bot then? Well, generally you would use a VPS or a Raspberry Pi to do this. A VPS is a virtual private server. It is something that is stored far, far away and you can access it, generally SSH into it and then control it through there. It's a monthly payment to a company. I personally use Voltor. Well, I personally am paying nothing because my friend is actually paying for it because his bot needs to be hosted on it. But the one that we have is $5 a month. Volto offers VPSs for $2.50 a month, which would be fine for maybe about three or four bots. A Raspberry Pi is also another good option. It's a very cheap computer that can just sit there it doesn't take too much power, but you are limited by your own internet speeds and it is going to cost you in electricity. So I would recommend a VPS over Raspberry Pi, but either one is perfectly fine to be honest. Where can I find the code? It's in the description, always. I have the GitHub repository for the series in the description of every video, so just have a look there. Can you do a video on this topic? In short, yes. Probably. I am taking requests for the series. Even though the main part of the series has ended, I am still taking requests. I have this enormous list of requests that people have made for for Discord.py topics. So expect videos on at least most of those in the relatively near future. And the final question for the FAQ, can you do music commands? Well, to find that out, watch the next series. The next series that I'm going to do is specifically based on discord.py music. I wanted to do a separate series for this because it's going to take a lot of videos in itself so I just thought I'd do another series with a clean bot so it's all it's all clean and it's easy to follow. I'm going to be streaming the, uh, the planning phase for that before the videos go out and I also want to wait until discord.py 1.4 comes out which shouldn't be too long now. So I would expect at least the streams to start somewhere around August. The videos may come in late August, early September, something like that, depending on how long it takes to plan, really. The short answer is yes, I will be doing music commands. I do want to talk about one thing before we go, and that is about future uploads of Discord.py based videos. If you watch the one year update video, then you'll know that I'm trying to branch the channel into doing more than just Discord.py. I don't want it to be a one trick pony. So while I will be doing Discord.py videos in the future, I'll be doing the requests and I'm doing the music commands. It's not just gonna be Discord.py stuff and it's not necessarily gonna be the main focus. Well, the Discord.py music series is gonna be the main focus because it would be the active series. But this series is gonna take a bit of a back seat especially when it comes to requests and stuff. So it might take a little while for some videos 
to actually go out. I do want to do requests and stuff because I have a lot of them. I have this enormous list of things that people have actually requested throughout the duration of the series. I expect to see most of these requests in the next maybe month or two or something. I want to evenly split the videos out as best as I can. So there'll be a few videos on, on something, then maybe one on Discord.py, then Discord.py series, and then it all intermingle with each other. I haven't really planned how often the requests are going to go out. It'll just be when I can, really. But yeah, I just wanted to say that before we ended the video. As I said at the top of the video, if you have any questions about anything that I talked about in this video, then you can leave them down in the comments below, or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description to get some more help. While you're in the description, don't forget to check out my other links. I have all sorts of new things now that you can check out, so I'd appreciate it if you did that. But yeah, that's going to bring us to the end of the video. If you liked it, then say hello down below. If you really liked it, then consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. And if you really, really liked it, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Of course, you don't have to, but it'd be really cool of you to do. With that in mind, I'd like to thank my super patrons, Adam J, Jackster, and Shashank. And I will see you in the next video for whatever I do. I don't know what that will be yet. But yeah, see ya.